everybody, it's Bruce from Nature Calls. I am up on Denny Creek in Snoqualmie Pass somewhere. Um, just one of those needed to get out type of nights and hike into the woods. And, uh, you know, just get out. Um, our weather has been such where it's either so much snow that the mountains are closed due to avalanches or it's been raining and I'm not a huge rain fan I like the rain but I'd rather not <laughs> be out in the rain um, but I did want to get out and hang in the hammock which I haven't done in a while and uh, get some new gear going I brought the Hilleberg tarp 20 I was always curious about that I've got the tarp 10s yeah, and the tarp 20 just sounded like such a huge tarp, but it really isn't. It's for winter hammocking. It's perfectly doable. <laughs> Get a little bit of coffee going here. That's the uh, Giga Power by Snow Peak. It's a cool little little stove. I like that. Some bottles, some water, snow boiled down for the um, coffee. I'm going to kind of reverse engineer this whole video. Um, is when I got up here, I hiked up probably another half mile further and the snow just getting too is so heavy where you broke through and I saw this spot on the way out here and uh, so I came back to it. it looks like we got a good inch of snow this is the Hilleberg ultralight tarp it worked perfect really um, I'll just I'll take this connector front flip it back so you can see how it fits with a hammock you get the snow off here I was always curious because I love this fabric is love this fabric and I do a lot of sewing as some of you know but uh, and making tarps but this fabric is so nice let's go ahead and flip her back I have to dig down in my snow spikes There you are. Crap. Oh. So this goes to show, even with all the tests and stuff I do, I need to keep in my kit a few items just for hammock. Um, I have had like a couple of lengths of, of uh, the 1 8 bungee cord in there um, just to make little adjustments be really nice I did that before I don't know why I have it now but this is my under quilt that I made um, considering it snowed last night and everything's frozen I say it got under 30 um, probably if it fit better it'd probably be fine at 30 and um, this is the top quilt that I made and you know, everything got just a little bit on the chill side, but I'm using scavenge down in both of these. In fact, this one, the top quilt, I actually use pillow down, which is horrible. I don't think there's any insulative qualities to it. But you know, it, it worked. I put my saw bag over the top of it, and actually I had a little butt cold, so I put, put uh, put this little Z seat underneath my butt and that seemed to work. Oh, looks like my coffee's ready. But this is uh, my aerobic hammock, which is personally my favorite that I made. Uh, so comfortable. Time for coffee.
<laughs> doesn't give you much <laughs> snow. I need to fill that up a lot more. It's nice to have the fresh inch of snow. Snow just melts to nothing. That ought to get me a cup of coffee. The coffee's ready. It's nice. Uh, so this is a, I use the Microlite Duelist sometimes, and what you can do is break it down into basically a soloist mode. Of course, which is really easy is take out one of the cups. Um, real solid little Starbucks Via yeah this uh, feels good this little um, snow peak works well I can see where the yeah, little tongs come in far enough so a little cup could be on it it's definitely is basically the same diameter as this micro duelist you can do a skillet on there easily so that's pretty cool like that mix up the coffee starting to get a little bit of a real light snow it's just beautiful up here Good. Very nice. Yeah, this is perfect. It just just exactly what you need to do. Just sit and watch. And look, relax. God, it's so peaceful here. But I got out so late, I really figured I wasn't going to do it much snowshoeing. Figured I'd see how far I could get with just my crampons. Because really, it's it, in the last few days, it hasn't snowed. So I know the trails are going to be just icy, basically. But it definitely got to a point where I could have ventured over into that area maybe another quarter of a mile I probably could have found a pretty cool spot but it would have all been snowshoeing but I think I found a really cool spot anyway so I'm happy ah oh, cedars look awesome firs look awesome yeah, during the winter we have alder trees, and they, those suckers break all the time. So there are some alder trees around here. We had a big snow, big wet, heavy snow, and uh, you know all the tops of all the trees snapped. There's like alders all along the highway on the way up here. You can just see the, the top half of these 60 foot trees just couldn't handle the weight. So there's a bunch of like thousands of trees that are that are uh, broken on the top. Say the Hillberg tarp. I wanted to get up here early enough, but you know, I think lately we've just been kind of procrastinating a lot. Um, even have all my gear, you know, set in my car, but I'm just not getting out the door. Like yesterday, I'm just not getting out the door. I could have got out the door two hours earlier, and, and could have got up here a lot earlier and done a bunch of things. But for some reason. I enjoy winter camping, I guess I do, but it doesn't suck me in maybe as well as it does to other people. It's beautiful out here, and, and uh, 
I'm not a real day hiker. I don't like day hiking necessarily. I, I to me that's just going for a walk, especially doing videos. It's like you know here, go on a walk with me, which is nice, but. I'm more into the gear, so I like to see the gear being used. I like to see the different kinds of gear, like the gear setup. So that's my my bend on things. You know, just going for a walk on a dirt trail, um, even with nice scenery. I mean, it's okay, I guess, if you live local to that trail. But I like to get out, and I like to live in the woods. You know, it's like just it's walking in nature is cool. I like that, but I think at the end of the day, when everybody else starts walking, if you can just stop and stay there and stay with nature and see what happens after everybody else goes back home, it's it's really amazing. It's really peaceful. Nature loves you being there. Also use this uh, Internet Explorer, uh, InReach Explorer, and it's a uh, really cool tool. Um, I can text my family, friends, um, now that I'm okay. So I just typed my family and say, still alive. And this will go out over the global network and uh, send them a message. And they can message me back. So that's pretty cool. Wow, it's 1137. <laughs> I slept a long time. Yeah, so this worked out pretty well. Um, this is the underquilt that I did with no seams. I taped all the baffles. Um, that seemed to work really well. It was fine until maybe three or four in the morning. Um, and it started getting a little bit cold. But um, I think the... Was it worth all the trouble and the cost? No, to do the seamed, the tape seams. Um, it was fun though. Um, and really, I might just dump all these feathers there. I just scavenge feathers when I do this because this would be a lot in dollars for if I was going to do it in high performance. Um, like waterproof 850 or 800 um, 900 950 is just way too expensive but if I was gonna do it I would probably empty all these feathers out and uh, replace them with say 8 or 850s 850 um, fill power but I use the I use some down pillows and those they aren't really down they're feather pillows and so so they're really complete feathers, and I just don't think that has that insulative power that that we need. So I knew better when I was doing it, but I was in a, I was excited and wanted to finish my cool under quilt, but it kept me warm enough. Uh, there's my little gadget yelling at me. <laughs> Everybody's happy I'm still alive. So this is my underquilt and um, haven't had it out too much in this kind of weather. But I know my other underquilt that I did, I actually had it so I could um, bring it up on the sides with some elastic that I really liked. So I'll be adding that onto this one as well. Um, and I also 
had the scavenge down in this one as well. Um, not none of the feather, the feather pillow one things, but but um, you know just home down um, comforters and things like that. Um, so I might augment this with some more down for sure. And I decided I'm going to add definitely some more um, bridge line organizers. Those are really handy, but it's, I just have one, just doesn't seem to want to, that's not a good plan. So I'm going to add some more of these on there. This is Osprey Zenith 88. And one of the things I've been finding out is that I take so much camera gear even though I really like my smaller packs um, to carry tripods and stuff like that, um, I need a backpack that will really handle, you know, a good 40 or 50 pounds. Um, and I want to take more, more camera. You know, I want I want the ability to take a couple tripods and booms and a droid, a, a drone maybe all at one time so um, even though I like my smaller packs I you know, the camp gear is going to be the same weight but it's my camera gear it's getting more it's getting more and more heavy so um, I'm trying out a few different packs and this is the Osprey Zenith 88 and um, got a couple other packs to try out and what's nice about this one is that the, the water bladder actually fits between your the back frame and the uh, in the backpack so, yeah, so this is my aerobic and It just works great. So all my kind of my latest design ideas. Um, it's not the XL wide, um, but it's extra long, so I can still get there. Um, really haven't had a good excuse to make myself a new new hammock. <laughs> Luckily, other people let me uh, make hammocks for them, so I get to play around. The old Marlin spike hitch is how I do it. Mystery. So obviously, last time I did my straps, I had a, I had to make maybe another strap out of the other one, so it was half as long. And I brought it down to this tree. This tree, a cedar, and it wouldn't fit around the tree where you know normal maybe eight inch, ten inch diameter trees that strap would have been fine. But uh, luckily, I still had this strap at full length, which is I think twelve feet, and I really need that that length to. Uh, to get around these trees. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else had this thing where you know so you get your your hammock and everything all set up and you, you're sitting there sleeping in it, you know, about ready to go to sleep, and then you get a little bit of movement in your suspension, and you, and you can hear it. It translates through your whole system. It's like it's like oh crap, you know what's going to go on? I mean, that was it, but you know it gives you this weird feeling like oh crap, so it's going to fall apart any second. So that happened to me last night. It's nice though. Marlin spike hitch, because you just pull the toggle out, toss it, and you're done. But uh, I used to run with a smaller Gerber dime as my ultralight uh blade system little multi-tool multi and it was fine uh, for maybe tent camping it'll be fine but um, you know there's definitely a need to make toggles or whatever or spikes or whatever you're you're needing up here you need a knife and you need a saw and I'm using the Gerber I'll tell you what it is later but it has a saw blade on it and it's it's about four or five times heavier than my Gerber dime uh, but it has a saw and it has a good blade on it and it has all the other tools, and so I think it's definitely going to be my hammocking um, blade, multi-tool. I could bring big knives, but um, 
but you need a saw. And I might actually start bringing my, my Baco Laplander. That's pretty lightweight. This coat I've been wearing in the last few videos is the uh, Arteryx Atom LT. Um, it's synthetic mid-layer, so I've been finding in my my weather doing a down as a mid-layer because I sweat. The down just gets eaten alive, um, so decided to move to a synthetic, and it's it's just been working great. Okay, all packed up, ready to go. Another great evening out in this weather. Didn't rain. Awesome. Thanks for coming along and see you on the trail. Bye now.